Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Professor Sides, and this course is Principles of Microeconomics, Chapter 4, The Market Forces of Supply and Demand. In our previous lecture, we spoke about supply, we spoke about demand, and then we spoke about what happens when we bring the two together, in essence, forming a market. In the last lecture, I told you that when we have a market condition where supply interacts with demand. At some point in that interaction, we will come to what is known as an equilibrium price and quantity. And that is the point at which price, um, in which, excuse me, supply, quantity supply matches quantity demand. And in that same lecture, I told you that at any point other than that equilibrium point, we were in disequilibrium. This lecture is going to talk about what happens when we are in disequilibrium. And then also we will talk about what, hap what we will do when we're in disequilibrium to get back to equilibrium. Remember that we stated in the last lecture that the point at which quantity supplied and quantity demand equal was called the equilibrium point and we said at that point that the equilibrium price was three dollars and the equilibrium quantity is 15 uh, and so i told you that if we were at some point zero one two four five six if we were at some point other than three dollars and at a, quant a point other than a quantity of 15, we were in disequilibrium. When we are in disequilibrium, one of two things are going to happen. We will, in the market, experience either a surplus, which is excess supply, or a shortage, which is excess demand. Let's look at surplus or excess supply. At this point, what we see is that the equilibrium price is $3 and the equilibrium quantity is 15 So if we're still talking through, um, as our example, lattes, uh, a cup of latte, a latte cup, the equilibrium or market price would be $3. And at that point, the coffee shops, Starbucks and Jitters, Jitters would sell 15 and the customer, there would be 15 customers that would want to, they would want to buy um, the lattes. But it's, let's suppose that one or both, Starbucks or, or Jitters, as a market or individually decided that they wanted to sell their latte for more than $3. If they sold it for four, five, or six dollars, that would put us in disequilibrium. And as our example, let's say that they chose $5. If they chose $5, you can see that quantity demanded is now nine. Only nine cups of latte would be sold at $5. However, at $5, 25, the supplier would want to sell 25. Because again, remember that the higher the price, the more willing and able the supply the seller is willing to supply and that the higher the price the less that a buyer is willing to sell so willing and able to buy so here our demand our quantity demanded at five dollars is only nine cups and our quantity supply is at 25 cups and so since we have more supply than demand we have excess supply or surplus Now, if we, at $5, we have this surplus, and so we have more lattes that are, that are not being sold, and so the supplier decides we want to sell these, so in order for them to sell it, then they would lower their price from $5 to $4. Now, remember when we talked about demand curve uh, shifters, and we said that if some, anything other than price change, then the supply curve would shift. Here, the only thing we're changing is the price. We're dropping, we're, we're dropping the price from $5 to $4. So then we would see movement on the demand curve 
and movement on the supply curve. And when we see this movement, what ends up happening is at, at $4, we still have surplus because at $4, and now instead of having 25 cups of latte, we now have 20 cups that the sellers are willing to sell. But we still, instead of having nine cups that the buyers are willing to buy, we now have 12 cups that the buyer is willing to buy. And so when we subtract 20 from 12, we still have excess supply or surplus. And then we would continue until we would lower the uh, suppliers, would the sellers would uh, lower their price down to, to the point to where they got to three. And at three, we would be selling, we would sell 15 and the buyers would buy 15. Now, the process of moving from $5 to $4 to $3, that market um, process is what we in economics call the invisible hand. The invisible hand will always move the market from a dis state of disequilibrium to a place of equilibrium. We will continue to shift the pricing until we get to a place of equilibrium. And that is the, that is the theory of the invisible hand. Now, let's look at if we are in disequilibrium from um, the other perspective. When we have disequilibrium and the price is above market price or equilibrium price, we would experience excess, um, excess supply or surplus. If we, if the, if we choose a price below market price or below equilibrium price, then we will experience what is known as shortage or excess demand. Because remember that as the price gets smaller or gets lower, then our demand increases. So we go from 15 to 20 going towards 25. And at the same time, as the price decreases, the seller is wanting to supply less. So in this example, when we drop our price, when our price is not at market, which is $3, but at $1, we have at least 22 um, cups that um, demand, that are quanti 21, excuse me, 21 lattes that would be demanded. But our sellers would only want to supply five cups. And so we have excess demand or a shortage of lattes. At this point, we would the seller would raise their price to $2. And when they raise their price to $2, what we will see is that the demand, because we're changing price again, and only price, the demand decreases. I'm sorry, the demand decreases here. So demand goes went from 21 to now it is at 18. So we have, because we're only changing the price, we're moving along the curve. And so we get here for our demand, and then we come, because we've raised the price, we will see movement along the supply curve where it increases. And we still have a shortage we still have a shortage, but we don't have as much of a shortage. And we would continue until, again, we reach the equilibrium. This concludes our lecture on uh, market surplus and market shortage. I look forward to speaking to you again. Have a good day.